Today we are going to go through the steps of configuring this super cool media center which can be controlled using your Android or iOS device as a remote. Hi, this is JCRP and welcome to Media Milan. To do this project you will require Raspberry Pi, keyboard and mouse to connect to the Raspberry Pi, external USB hard drive, one or two depending upon the grade or normal configuration and Android mobile so that you can download and install the app which will act as a remote a 5 volt micro USB charger that this could be your Android mobile charger but make sure it gives at least 2000 milliamps of power and a HDMI wire that connects to your TV from the Raspberry Pi so gather all these materials and let's go ahead and do this project first we need to format our micro SD card properly head over to SD association website and download the application Installing the application is a straightforward process. Insert your SD card into your card reader. In the SD formatter app, choose the correct SD card, change to overwrite format and proceed. Once formatting is done, you get a confirmation. There are two types of operating systems available that you can install in your Raspberry Pi to convert into a media center. One is called as Kodi and another one is called as OSMC. The links to both these operating systems are given in the description. Now the main difference between Kodi and OSMC is that Kodi is not a Linux flavor. It is built from ground up. So basically you cannot give any Linux commands to it like sudo or apt-get. But in our project, we need to create a network attached storage system which requires a lot of Linux commands. So OMC is the best choice. Obviously, OMC runs a Linux OS on top of which it runs Kodi. So you get the goodness of Linux along with the goodness of Kodi. Apart from all these things, I just feel OSMC has beautiful visuals like you saw before. Download the installation application for your OS and get going with the setup process. Sometimes your PC does not allow downloaded apps to be installed. In that case, change your settings here. Make sure to choose anywhere. Choose the language and your version of the Raspberry Pi board. R3 is the latest stable build of OSMC at the time of making this video. Let's burn the files to the SD card. Choose connection type minus wired. We will configure the network later. Choose the correct SD card and let the app download OSMC and burn it to the SD card. After installation is complete, quit the application and eject the card. Now insert the SD card on the Raspberry Pi and connect the Ethernet wire, the HDMI cable, power source, keyboard and mouse. If you see the screen once you power on your Raspberry Pi, then all is good. OSMC will start installing automatically. Time to configure your OSMC. Select your language and go through the basic setting process. Now click on my OSMC, then select network and set your IP address manually. This is necessary so that when you restart your Raspberry Pi, the IP remains the same. If you're not interested in setting up a network attached storage system, then click on the button here to skip this part. For others, let's continue. To get to the terminal, let's exit OSMC. The login and password is OSMC in lowercase. First, let's install NTFS package to manage the hard disks. Using FDisk, we list all the drives connected to Raspberry Pi. I have already connected my two 2TB hard drives to the Pi. You can see them listed as SDB and SDC. SD is a Windows hard disk I connected to test something else. To mount these two hard drives to the OS, we need to create two directories. I named them USB HDD1 and USB HDD2. Then I mount the hard disk I want using the mount command.
here SDA1 and SDB1 are the partition names inside the SDA and SDB drivers that we saw earlier. To keep things organized, I create a shares folder inside each USB folder. This folder will be the shared folder from each drive which can be accessed from other PCs in your network. Let's install Samba. Samba is a file sharing application which can help other PCs talk to your Raspberry Pi. If you get an error like this, it means that we need to update our OS and we do that using this command. Again, try installing Samba and this time, success! Let's make a copy of the Samba configuration file before editing. And then use nano editor to make changes to the config file. Scroll down to the end of the page and create share folder names. The name you give inside the square brackets will be the names shown in other PCs when you access this Raspberry Pi. Make sure read only is set to no. After making changes, press Ctrl X to close the nano editor, press Y to save the changes. Restart Samba to take effect of the changes added to the config file. Let's create a user and password and add it to Samba. This username and password will be asked every time you want to access the shares folder from other PCs. I have set Fat Lady as the username. All set. Let's test it out by copying files into the share folder. And sure enough, we see it displayed here in the directory listing. To automatically mount both the hard drives to OS, let's write a few lines of code. Open FS tab in nano editor and write these lines of codes. Save and close the nano editor. We install rsync. rsync is a powerful tool used to make mirror copy of a folder or a drive to another. We can use this in case you want RAID capabilities, but that is out of scope for this tutorial. I have attached a link if you want to know more. Restart OSMC and go to file manager inside settings to check if you can see your mounted drives. Now to install the mobile app. Head over to Google Play and search for Kodi. Make sure you select the correct app and install it to your device. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now you can have your own media center and watch all those beautiful movies right from one place. Do visit my YouTube channel next Friday for another interesting video. Until then, happy learning!